Two high school students in central Colorado are recovering after being attacked by a third student with a hammer. The Columbine High School students say a 14-year-old girl attacked them with a hammer as they headed to the bathroom. Police took the 14-year-old girl into custody. The two victims were treated for their injuries at an area hospital. Police say the suspect and one of the victims had a history of fighting. If the cutesy swooning and doe-eyed drooling of Valentine's Day is just too much for you to bear, and I say there's nothing wrong with that, but here's <laughs> something to bear in mind. Being in a loving relationship can have <laughs> massive health benefits, Erica Edwards explains. Never fear singletons, lasting meaningful friendships can also be helpful. They cut the risk of social isolation. And I'm just going to leave that one alone. <laughs> gonna leave it alone. Leave it alone. I'm going to say good morning to all of our friends on Facebook. That joke is going to stay in my head. <laughs> Oh my your Valentine's goodness. Day plans are this morning. <laughs> yeah, do you have a tradition? If so, let us know about it. Just log <laughs> on and join the conversation at facebook.com slash ch2ktuu. It's only because Todd can relate, that's oh, all. Todd, are the, you lonely? The joke, are you lonely? No, nope, the joke is staying in my head because <laughs> I'll get calls and emails. Give him a hug, Sheila. Oh, Come that. On, Later. And, Later. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't shower today. She doesn't have to. <laughs> you didn't? <laughs> That's a joke, too, but that one I can say. Yeah, on right. There. We, didn't, we didn't get that one. Take though. it away, Mitch. Hugh Neff has won the 2012 race. Neff and his team were first into Whitehorse, crossing the finish line at 414 this morning, Alaska time. It was a sprint to the finish, too, with Neff beating Alan Moore by 26 seconds. Huh. Moore had a 42 minute lead out of Brayburn, but Neff caught up this morning with the two teams battling for most of the way. Hugh Neff's total time for the race is 9 days, 17 hours, 14 minutes, 49 seconds. It is day 13 of the investigation into the abduction of Samantha Koenig and Anchorage police say even though they aren't releasing new information that doesn't mean they're not making headway. Hundreds attended a candlelight vigil on Saturday for the 18 year old. Police believe an armed man abducted her February 1st as she was finishing up her shift at Common Grounds Espresso on Tudor. Lieutenant Dave Parker says detectives are following up on several good leads. Samantha's father James Koenig has set up a P.O. box and he hopes it will allow people to send anonymous tips or it can be used for those wanting to send letters of support to Samantha, her family, and friends. The address is P.O. Box 91772, Anchorage, Alaska, 99509. For the latest information on the case and a look at previous stories, visit our website, ktuu.com. In other news this morning, so you don't know what to get that special someone today, and if you haven't checked, you're running out of time. <laughs> the question you might be asking yourself is, what do women really want for Valentine's Day? Reporter Gordon Takumatsu is determined to find that out. Well, now, as for the issue of space running out of snow dumps, Mayor Dan Sullivan says he doesn't think emergency action is needed yet, but he adds if we do get a heavy snow, he's ready to call a vote on the matter in as little as a week. This week, Libyans will mark the first anniversary of the start of the uprising which saw the overthrow and death of leader Muammar Gaddafi. It all began a year ago today with the arrest of a human rights activist in the city of Benghazi. Two days after the arrest, anti-government protesters called a day of rage in Benghazi, while in Tripoli, Gaddafi vowed to crack down on the protest. A bloody civil war raged for months with the UN Security Council imposing a no-fly zone on the country. In August, after weeks of NATO bombardment, rebel fighters entered and conquered Tripoli. Gaddafi was finally caught in search and then killed. Libya has now started to take steps towards new elections. 25 degrees now at 550. It's uh, amazing what we demand from our smartphones no these kidding. days. And the more we demand, the, those phones often deliver. But as NBC's... I'm good for about a charge every other day, so I'm doing good. <laughs> yeah, you are. You can turn down the brightness of your screen and avoid extreme temperatures. That also conserves battery life. Now, some people go ahead and get an extra battery so that they can just swap it with the old one when it gets low. In any case, some good advice for you this morning. Definitely so. Let's head back to the Weather Center, get a check of the forecast. Morning, Mitch. Is that the number of times you're checking on the weather throughout the day? That's, that's true. Gonna, With the KTU weather app, you can get for free. <laughs> yeah. Now back to the U.S. where something's dropping from the sky south Oof. of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and it's making a big mess. Yeah, cell phone video shows a conference of crows <laughs> filling the night sky. Thousands of the blackbirds have invaded a neighborhood, and as you can guess what the feathered foes leave behind, their calling cards coat cars and houses, frustrating the people who live there.
I think if Ravens did that around here, we, they would, people wouldn't be nearly oh, as nice. Yeah, uh, I think I, there'd be a few shotguns I'm coming out. Yeah. <laughs> and we want to say good morning now to all of our friends on Facebook this morning. I, I was saying on, on our page here that I just looked away for a few minutes and all of a sudden we had this bunch of folks that tuned in and it's like, oh my gosh, I have so many questions to answer. <laughs> you got to keep up. I, I'm trying. And if you would like to overwhelm <laughs> Sheila some more, facebook.com slash chtuktuu. Say good morning. Coming up, we'll have another hour of the morning edition, so there's time for me to catch up. Yeah. Stay with us. We'll be right back after this. <laughs> Turning to health news now. Could the not-so-secret ingredient of the iconic Chia Pet become a health food craze? I'm a bit skeptical, but Chia seeds are the new hit in the health food industry. They're actually loaded with protein and omega-3 oils. Dave Berggren has the story. <laughs> I want to know who said, that ah, looks like something that's good to eat. Let's, let me give yeah. that a try. Let's just yeah. throw that in. I just think it would be great if it could grow hair. You know what I mean? It's like <laughs> all of a sudden your hair starts. <laughs> oh, Lordy. We want to say good morning to all of our friends on Facebook. Have you caught up yet? Uh, no, but I just good morning to everybody, and I made up a new word, so consider yourself good morning. Well, you're making up words now, huh? Yes. Oh, boy. Well, log on and join uh, our word-making conversation at facebook.com slash ch 2 k to you. Yeah, we love to hear from you. <laughs> hey, don't worry about it. I make up words every morning. I know you yeah, do. So, I know. Uh, join the club. These weather people. <laughs> that's what they do. Yeah, that's what we uh, do. The head of Alaska Air says he will retire. Uh, Bill Air will no longer be the CEO of, of the Air Group and its subsidiary carriers, Alaska Airlines and Horizon Air. Air is set to step down May 15th at the annual shareholders meeting. The company says Brad Tilden, a 21-year veteran at Air Group, will succeed Air as CEO. And be sure to stay tuned to the morning edition. We'll bring you updates as they come in to our newsroom that's new and just the last half hour or so. Meanwhile, it's been two weeks since the disappearance of Samantha Koenig. APD says it's making progress and Samantha's father, James, says he's trying to remain hopeful. James Koenig spoke with us last night. He says as each day goes by, he worries more and he says he receives phone calls daily from people who want to offer words of support and says that has helped his family get through this. Now to the state capitol where education funding is up for debate. The House is facing a proposal to automatically increase the amount of money given to schools over the next three years. Governor Sean Parnell joined with House Republicans saying that before he increases the funding by $475 million over the next five years, he wants to be guaranteed better student performance. House Democrats say Governor Parnell's proposal amounts to a funding cut because of things like inflation. The Senate is considering a couple of proposals that will change the state's tax rate. Some Democrats and Republicans are against the changes. They say altering ACEs could cost the state up to $8 billion in lost revenues. And turning to the price of Alaska crude this morning, when the market opens later today, trading will begin at $119.27. That is the same price Alaska's oil closed at the day before. From now until early March, the window is open for the University of Alaska Fairbanks Geophysical Institute to launch a NASA rocket. The rocket will be launched north of Fairbanks from the Poker Flat Research Range, and its mission is to gather information about space weather conditions. In a release, the University of Alaska Fairbanks says that the two-stage 46-foot rocket will be launched through an active aurora. Findings will allow scientists to understand space weather and how it affects how radio waves travel through plasma. Data gathered from this launch could help people who design GPSs. Well, the big news of the morning, giant Snickers bars may soon be a thing of the past. What? <laughs> Mars Incorporated, the maker of Snickers, Twix and M&M's, has announced that it will stop selling chocolate products with more than 250 calories in them, says it plans to reduce sodium levels in all products by 25% by the year 2015. Even taking it with a big one, you're not going to reduce the or boost the nutritional value of a Snickers. Now to China, where more <laughs> retailers have been told by authorities to take the popular iPad tablet off their shelves. The move comes in the wake of a legal battle between a Chinese technology firm and Apple over a possible trademark issue. Two major shopping malls in Shanghai, along with stores in various cities, including Beijing, have reportedly been asked by the government to pull iPads from its shelves. Lawyers representing the company that claims to own the iPad name say that they are also seeking an export ban on iPads. The iPad is made in China. U.S. home builders are growing more optimistic, and this story tops our business report. The National Association of Home Builders Wells Fargo Builder Sentiment Index rose in February for the fifth straight month to its highest level since May of 2007. Home builders are optimistic home sales will pick up sharply when the spring buying season begins. Last year was the worst year for new home sales 
sales on records dating back to 1963. And Lexus has been named the top performer for vehicle dependability. Consulting firm J.D. Power & Associates pulled up 31,000 owners of 2009 model year vehicles and rated brands by the number of problems those owners had experienced in the last 12 months. Lexus was rated most dependable, followed by Porsche, Cadillac, Toyota, and Scion. The worst performers were Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, and Jaguar. Recapping this morning's top stories, it's been more than two weeks and still no sign of missing barista Samantha Koenig. The Anchorage Police Department says it's making progress on the case, which Samantha's father says gives him hope. James Koenig spoke with us last night, saying as each day passes, he worries more, but he says support from family and friends gets him through. And proof of performance before funding allocation. That's Governor Sean Parnell's stand on the state's debate over increasing funds known as base student allocation for school districts. House Republicans agree, but Democrats say if the funding is kept the same as it's been for the last two years, that's the same as a cut because of inflation. Meanwhile, this morning, a local softball coach remains without a job. This is Anchorage Police served Dennis Franks with court papers after one of his players' parents asked for a long-term stalking protective order. But as Channel 2's Rebecca Paulsha shows us, Franks says he doesn't know why he was fired. The Anchorage Brewing Company has prepared a special beer for Fur Rendezvous. A Belgian-style Saison will be the flavor of the rendezvous for this year. Traditionally, Saison is known as a dark winter brew because it's made in the winter months and later released in March or April. To top it all off, for every bottle of brew purchased, the Anchorage Brewing Company and its distributor Specialty Imports will donate a dollar to the Rondi Committee. So you'll probably be donating a couple of dollars then, too. What is that supposed to mean? <laughs> How dare you? How dare you? Have a great weekend. <laughs> Have a good weekend, everybody.